What's going on, guys? Sensible Prepper Live. We're live. We are live. We're live once again. Uh, have Robbie Wheaton with us today, and uh, great to have him. He's been a, a gunsmith for over 20 years, Marine Corps veteran. Veteran. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Not former Marine. <laughs> uh, Marine Corps veteran, and also uh, owns WheatonArms.com and has the Robbie Wheaton YouTube channel. Yes, sir. And we're just talking about it. Uh, he's doing a live. He does lives on Tuesday Tuesday night. And uh, is it 6? 6 p.m. Yep. And 6 Eastern Standard Time. And he's going to be going over the South Carolina uh, new constitutional carry yep. bill. Yeah. It's a, it's a whole lot of information that's in there. A lot of changes to the, to the state law, how it's written right now. And uh, we're going to really dig into it and, and talk about what you can do, what you can't do, what a lot of the changes are. Um, it's some really good information on it. So if you're, if you're in South Carolina, want to learn about that. If you're outside of South Carolina and considering traveling to this state, there's a lot of information that we're going to be covering tonight for non-residents as well. So right. make sure you check it out because they'll be under the carry. They are. Thanks. So yep. you can, you can carry when you're here in South Carolina. So that's all good stuff. Um, and, and we're pretty pleased with it. There's some things in it. We don't really, we're really concerned about, but you know, not, not too bad. Yep. I mean, we got a lot, of, we gained a lot, gained a lot. Uh, great to have Sarah Mack over on the computer. She will be monitoring uh, the comments for questions. And if you have a question, uh, Go ahead and at any time uh, put the question down and then we'll take a break and you can uh, then we'll see if we can answer it. Yep. <laughs> we'll do our best. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something a little different. Well, let me let me mention Exotac. Uh, I didn't have my my uh, props out here, but uh, Exotac makes the best fire starters on the market. They're made down in Winder, Georgia. Uh, they're just excellent, well designed. And you can get a 20 percent discount using Suits 20. Uh, with the link down below in the description. And we really appreciate Exotac for offering that to uh, to you guys. Uh, you need to have a fire kit. Very important. Very important. Okay, so we're going to talk about something a little different today. And a few years ago, I talked about FEMA's recommendations for their survival kits mm -hmm. or what they think you need to have at your home. It's it's good information. Uh, whether you, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of FEMA. <laughs> You know, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of rumors about, you know, internment camps, FEMA camps. And, and if you've ever read the Going Home series, they're the number one villain. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, and it was designed and is designed to be able, in case of natural emergencies, to come in and help do yep. things, help people. And um, so that's the basis. And you may not agree with FEMA's philosophy. I the one thing that's funny is their number one goal <laughs> is, you know, inclusion or, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's just like, what the heck? I mean, your number one goal should be to protect and to take care of things. But their second is climate change. Mm. Now, if you're a big proponent <laughs> of climate change, it could affect natural, you know, disasters, I guess, if if you want to look at it like that. So. Whatever we're going, but we're, we're not going to, you know, a lot of times people say FEMA, FEMA, oh, they're just a bunch of, you know, look, there's a lot of really good people that, that do work at FEMA. My uncle worked for FEMA for years. He was in the upper management. I never got to talk to him about the FEMA camps, but yep. he did work uh, at FEMA. And I've had friends that have worked closely with FEMA uh, for different projects. And here's the thing, guys, we pay our tax dollars. And when I went to the website uh, again, which has been a, a while back, and I'll have the links. It's, I have FEMA, their, their link down there, but I have ready.gov. And that's the one you really need to check out. There is a lot of resources, a lot. And here's the thing. The guys from FEMA, they are in the, they're in there. They're mm -hmm. in the mix. I mean, yeah. they're boots on the ground. You know, they know what's going on. They see a, a lot of things. Uh, and experience a lot of things. And so from this list, we're going to look at the low to no cost preparations recommended by FEMA. It's actually a pretty good list to the point where we wanted to bring it on since we prepper. Yep. I think next week we're going to hit what they recommend for a home survival kit. And they also recommend having something to throw in the back of your vehicle. They do. They, they recommend a bug out bag. Yeah, they recommend. So now they don't recommend <clears> firearms, <throat> but you know, that's on you. And the thing is, is all this obviously can be tailored to how your philosophy is. But I just think that there's some really good resources. Guys, we pay our tax dollars. I think 
Biden just up FEMA's budget by two billion dollars. Um, well, and you know that's to me that is that's not a good that's not a bad thing. You know, my my oldest son works a lot with FEMA. That's right uh, for wildfires and hurricanes and different different natural disasters and things like that. So you know, from from my perspective, I've seen a lot of good from FEMA with things that they do. Um, they're with natural disasters. They are ahead of the natural disaster in most cases. They have people staged in our own site ready to to plug and play and go to work as soon as the area like during a hurricane as soon as the hurricane is passed they're already in there um whether it's flooding or whatever they're they're taking boats whatever they have to do to get to an area to be able to help people and with wildfires you know they're their own site with wildfires and and fighting the wildfires and stuff they do a tremendous tremendous job so yeah i'm i feel pretty confident in saying that a lot of this information has came from the people that have been there and done that in the field, boots on the ground, and have the experience to make some good recommendations. Right. And, and I agree 100%. Uh, so, and that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, now, if there's a grid down situation and total chaos and martial law, then they're probably, <laughs> it's probably going to change some things, <laughs> but this does not change. Okay. So, this was interesting. Flood, flooding is mm -hmm. the number one disaster in America. I believe flooding. Uh, and Actually, 25% of flooding happens in areas that are not designated as flood zones. Right. So, and you can go, there's a, actually on their website, there is a link that you can check. I think it's Flood Watch. You can click it and you can look at your specific area and see where the flooding is. Now, one thing about that, and, and this is really a caveat to what we're talking about, but, but it is a free or no, it's a free um, service. You can mm -hmm. just go and check it, uh, is in your general area, like we have some big, pretty big rivers that run close to us uh, within uh, two miles. Uh, and we have a, a lake that's actually right behind us. So there are areas to be flooded. The thing is, is to know what those areas are, know what those flood zones are, mm -hmm. and to avoid them if you're ever in a flood situation. The other thing, too, is, and this seems to be without saying, but people do it. And when I was young, I did it, is coming down to a bridge that's flooded over and going, man, and just driving over it anyway. <laughs> you know, if there's floodwaters, uh, guys, it's best just to turn around yeah. because the car can be swept up. And um, or the like for us, we had a I had a little MG midget and I went down and it, the water went over the hood. Yeah. Well, you know, the distributor cap went out, you know, I mean, it just short. So my cousin and I get on get, look real smart. We get back there and push it. And we have rushing water coming oh, by. Man. We lived, but man, you know, if we'd have realized the danger, I'd have still got that car out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, so there, there, there's information like that. I found that on the FEMA website. Uh, so first off, and we've got a list of about 12 different things. Again, guys, prepping is expensive and you're buying food, you're buying water, you're buying supplies, yep. you know, you're doing all this stuff. These are things that or little or no cost. Secondly, uh, it, if you're not a prepper, if you're just like, you know what, I really want to just be prepared for those things that happen, then this is also a great list. So ready.gov and you can find it. So first thing, know your area. What are the disasters that happen in your area? Yep. I mean, for us. For us, you know, it's uh, earthquakes, flooding, tornadoes, um, hurricanes. Those are those are our top four in this. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Not but, just those. But you know, on the on the flip side of that, most of the earthquakes in our area are very minor. Um, they they register on on a seismograph, but they're most of them are so small you can't even feel them. Uh, flooding is a big one. You know, we're getting ready to come into our flood season. You know, March winds bring April showers, bring May flowers, and so you know, the next couple of months we're, is our, our rainy season, so we've got to watch out for flash flooding in our area. And then hurricane season's getting ready to start up as well. So we'll have uh, hurricanes and tornado season follows that right around the same time. So we'll have hurricanes and tornadoes that we'll have to prepare for. But, you know, in a lot of, a lot of places with tornadoes, we've had a lot of tornadoes coming across. Yep. A lot of hurricanes coming up. Forest fires which we typically don't have, mm -hmm. but they can be. Right. But you may live in an area of forest fires. Uh, you know, just the natural things, avalanches, uh, volcanoes. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a number of different threats. A big one that a lot of people don't <clears throat> think about are like lightning storms. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, you know, the house fires and forest fires being caused or started from lightning storms. 
Right. So first off, know your area and prepare. You know, prepare for that. Um, you know, tornadoes, every time it, you know, we have a safe room and that's where we have our supplies. And when the weather starts calling for it, mm -hmm. we set that up and we're yep. ready for it. So, you know, just being ready. And that's something that doesn't cost you anything unless you're going to build a safe room. <laughs> you know, that costs you. But uh, go ahead now and figure out a place that you're going to go when a tornado comes. Right. And, and it, the big thing, you know, I think if you're in an area that is very prone to a lot of tornado, tornadoes, really consider putting in a storm shelter. Uh, it is a cost added expenditure. But, you know, can you put a value or a price on you and your family's life? Right. I think the one thing, and I, and I read this because I was looking at some storm shelters to be a root cellar, mm -hmm. kind of thinking different things. and Multipurpose. Yeah, yep. but the, the problem is, is you want to make sure that you have a door that comes in. Right. Because if you have a door that goes out and something is lodged against it, you know, you're going to, you could be trapped. Right. And they may or may not be able to find you. May, and especially if you're like me and you're going to hide it. <laughs> you know, that's a big thing. Like, you know, a lot of people are looking at or considering building bunkers or fallout shelters for, for nuclear disasters and nuclear war. And uh, same thing with that. You want to make sure the doors open inward and not outward to that way if debris gets packed against it during a, a blast, you yeah. can still be able to get out. Yeah, a large tree. That's right. You know, or a vehicle. Yep. Even, you know, if it's a, if it's a really big blast. So, Know the know the area, know what you're prone to. Uh, and one thing, too, is I want to mention, so you did mention nuclear, is they do have recommendations for radiation and nuclear. Again, a great resource with a lot of different <clears throat> things. Uh, now, number two is create an emergency uh, communication plan. And that means that, and you can download a free template off this. I mean, in each of these, I didn't actually put the link to this, but you can look up low or no cost preparations or preparedness and it'll have this list but it also has live links that you can click for certain things um, but it, they'll give you a free uh, template and they want you to put down all your contacts put down your medical information mm -hmm. just things like that now this isn't necessarily um, your important documents we're going to get to that in a minute but this is just in an emergency having those contacts having that medical information and not only digitally, but make sure you have it on paper. Now, if you have it on paper, put the papers up high that if you yep. do have a flood, you know, I had a friend of mine that had a, a basement and he had one of his uh, hot water. He, he had something, he had a sump pump or something that actually the, the connection uh, broke and he went, he was gone for a few days. He mm. came back and his basement was just full of water, about two feet of water. Uh, anything that was on the floor is ruined. Yep. Everything. So that's, you want to take things like that and you want to put them up high. So these papers, make sure that you put this documentation up high. And you know, an important thing to me with, with, especially with communication plans that has phone numbers and contact information, medical information, I laminate mine. Oh, and, yeah. uh, laminators, you can pick them up. They're super cheap, but laminate it. And then it's sealed in between two pieces of plastic. So even if it does get some moisture on it, you're still going to be able to read it and use it. Yeah. In fact, it was funny. I, I've had laminators before and I was in off Home Depot. I mean, not Home Depot, but Office Max or mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, <clears throat> they had um, those laminators. Yep. And I thought, you know, I need to do that. Yep. You can do maps that way. You can do a lot of different things mm -hmm. uh, that are that are vital for a survival situation that get damaged. And I usually go one step further with mine. I three ring punch it three ring hole punch it and it goes in a binder and that binder, we keep that put up. Yeah. That's a great idea. You can even put that in a plastic bag yep. if you want. Um, okay. So create emergency plan and, you know, create this communication plan, uh, you know, with your family, make, ha make sure you have the numbers. And the next thing on the list is important numbers. I mean, how many of us have our, our numbers logged into our cell phone and we don't even know numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, I do know some certain numbers uh, for, for my family. But to be honest with you, um, if my phone was dumped in water yep. or a flood, uh, you know, I would I wouldn't know. Well, now, I, I have written all these numbers down in a little book. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the important things is make sure you have these numbers not in your phone, but have numbers separate, especially important, specifically important. Numbers. You still got your little black book. Yeah. I sure do. I got my black book. I didn't let Shannon see it. But yeah, absolutely right. You know, the 
and a lot of numbers that you don't think about your power company, uh, the local police telephone number separate from 911, your, mm. fo- your phone company, your cable company, um, your insurance company, uh, places that you don't normally call. But if you needed to access their telephone number, having those numbers to where you can access them, even if you don't have the ability to be able to to pull that number up on your phone. Right. And you may, well, you may be somewhere and your phone has been damaged and you walk into a store and you say, hey, can I borrow your phone Mm -hmm. or use your phone? And you don't have the number. It's not going to do you much good. Or you're like me, you call and nobody answers (laughs) because they're not paying attention. Uh, but having those numbers is a huge thing. And it's one of those small things that doesn't cost you anything. Just sit down one day and write them down and get you a little black book like I've got. And you put the numbers down and you've got them. And you don't have to put every number necessarily. Right. You know, put the numbers that are very, that are vital mm-hmm. to your survival, you know, important in the like disaster says, situation. The important numbers. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. This is pretty cool. Sign up for emergency alerts Mm -hmm. now. And you can decide, you can say, well, I don't trust the government. I'm not signing up for no app like that. And I understand that. (laughs) But one thing that's kind of cool about this app is emergency alerts. And you can sign up and you can get local or regional alerts. And you can also get national alerts. Uh, so this gives you a number of different things. Plus, I believe it gives you, um, and that, I think that's on the next, but there is a weather um, weather app also that will give you any kind of natural, you know, national. So you have a notification. Something comes up. There's a tornado coming mm-hmm. in your area. Uh, you know, the thing is, is in the news, I mean, in the weather, a lot of times when you're watching your weatherman, even the weather channel, you know, they say, oh, you got this coming here. And then it goes north. Right. You know, or you go so, and this way you can stay right with it, especially if you lose power and you're not able to, um, you know, you still have access to your phone. Well, you know, a big thing is most of us charge our phones at night. You know, we use our phones during the day. The battery runs low toward the evening and we charge them at night. Well, what if the late afternoon, evening, the power goes out due to a storm? You don't have the access or the ability to be able to charge your phone your phone dies, you still need to have a way to be able to access these weather alerts and information. So, you know, I always recommend keeping a battery pack that you can charge your phone with in case of an emergency. So if the power does go out, you do still have access to these alerts. Well, the first thing we do when there's a tornado situation Mm -hmm. or a heavy storm where you can lose your power is we get all of, we make sure all of our battery backups are charging that our phones are on their chargers, you know, where they're, and they're being charged. Mm-hmm. We make sure we have the cables, we have them located. Um, and one thing that I, that we keep, which is a little bit of a segue is we have our blackout box. Yep. And I, we did a video on that um, a couple of years ago. And it's just a box that has those items in it. That box has become this huge <laughs> crate. <laughs> And, you know, because we have extension cords and things like that, uh, lamps, lanterns, in case we have a power outage and we need to, you know, get our um, generator going. That's right. Flashlights, candles, all the necessities that you need if you're without power. Right. So signing up. And, and again, there's a lot of different resources that you can sign up on your computer or you can sign up as an app. So they do have the... uh uh, let's see, it's just the FEMA app and it's weather alerts, it's safety tips, it's different things, you know, and then you don't want to necessarily fill up your phone. Now, but, hey, here's the thing. Everything on your phone's being tracked anyway. So signing up for a FEMA app to be able to give you alerts isn't going to track you any more, any less than you're already being tracked. So, oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're tracked. But, you know, if, if you're not, if you have been so careful <laughs> and you wear like a complete hood over your face and you walk funny on purpose... You know, they've even got it down to where they can follow the, you're in the gate of your mm-hmm. walk. Yep. So uh, now, sis, we're going to go to a uh, to some questions here in just a second. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up. But there again, there's a number of different alerts, apps, information yep. that's just important uh, that a lot of times, even as a seasoned prepper. I mean, the one thing that really hit me when I was reading through this and, and studying it was that the thing with electronics mm-hmm. is just thinking about putting them up high. Right. And a lot of times I don't think about that. You know, one thing is, is if, you know, in some of these really big floods, especially the people that live near the Mississippi, 
uh, when they have these huge floods and the water rises or even in a, a, a hurricane mm -hmm. is that the water rises up and people have gotten in their attics to yeah. get away from the water. And then the water keeps coming up. They had no way to get out of that attic. Uh, yeah. Katrina so, was a huge example. Katrina, of that. Yes. Yep. A lot of people died that way. And so having a ax mm -hmm. or some kind of something up there, we can yep. cut a hole through your ceiling if you get to that point. So if you're in a real flood zone, it's really important that you kind of lock down on that. Uh, so anyway, well, let's go ahead and go to some questions. Um. Hi there, Javier asked, does civil defense still exist or is um, is it transformed into a different agency? Well, I know that Bill Clinton, during his time, tenure, uh, he kind of did away with a lot of the civil defense. In fact, that's how I got my civil defense Geiger counter mm -hmm. was he had gotten, he had had him get rid of all that stuff. Uh, but I'm not I sure the answer to that. Yeah, uh, Probably FEMA has taken that, but I don't know that for a fact. And Robbie's going to find out. Let me see right quick. Okay. Um, the bullfrog asks where to find the FEMA list. Go to ready.gov. Uh, I've got a link down in the description. Go to ready.gov and there'll be like disasters and something. And you can click on there and it'll tell you, uh, it'll give you a number of different options. Again, next week we're going to talk about FEMA, what their recommended kits are that you should have at your home. So we're going to we're going to check that through that. But there is a ton of resources. And then it gets into if you live in a flood zone, if you live in an area that's prone to forest fires, if you're, you know, wildfires, if you're into these areas, these are some specifics that you can do for that. So uh, it's a it is a great resource. Uh, first, last ask question from the back. How do you defend your home and family in a Haiti scenario? <laughs> wow. Get off the freaking island if you can possibly do it. I, that, that place has gone mad. Uh, when I read about the uh, the release of what 4,000 inmates and they just and they armed them and then they went nuts all over the city. Uh, and now they have cannibals, cannibal gangs. I mean, it's it's crazy what's going on down there. Um, a little backstory, though, about Haiti. When Haiti was formed as a nation, they dedicated their island to Satan. Now, you've got Dominican Republic right there, which is a completely different world. Uh, but Haiti itself has always been, it's been one of the poorest nations ever. And I think a lot of that has to do with their dedication to Satan. But, um, uh, and I had a friend that lived down, he was actually a missionary there for, for, for 30, 40 years. And, um, you know, there's some of the stories that he's told me have been absolutely crazy. So it is looks like most of the stuff with civil defense has been rolled under DHS, uh, Department of Homeland oh. Security. Right. So there's some other sub organizations that have that have branched out and have some other parts of it. But the majority of it looks like was rolled into uh, DHS. Um, so this is kind of a similar question. There's two of them that are similar. So I'm going to ask both of them. Tyler asked, will walkie talkies work after an, a an EMP? And Daniel Miller says, I have a ham and CB radio. Is this okay with an EMP? That remains to be seen. Um, <clears throat> maybe, probably not. Uh, because of, you know, you have repeaters uh, and two with what you have. And it's according to the location of the detonation, how close you are to the blast, what type of blast it is, um, the type of electronics and circuitry that you have in your equipment. Walkie talkies, you know, Faraday bag, they'd probably still be okay um, for, you know, line of sight use. But hams, it could go either way. They may or may not still work. Yeah. You know, it used to be they had a lot of tubes. Yep. You know, the radios used a lot of tubes. And, and a lot of that had to do with they were they were actually somewhat impervious to mm -hmm. some of the, uh, the EMP effects. But um, and guys, here's the thing. There's there's a lot of people out there that are that are that know a lot. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't know because it's all theory. It's all theory. But I highly recommend, this is the one thing I recommend, because if you put your cell phone in a Faraday bag, you know, you're going to use it. What I like to do is, is take really important things like some uh, ham radios or even walkie talkies, which are only line of sight. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of distance, even CBs. Uh, but is to have just specific electronics that I keep in that bag. Even if I use those on a regular basis, I want to have a set that I keep in there. 
for me, night vision, any kind of night vision, mm -hmm. I try to keep that in the back because I'm not using it all the time. Uh, but the, the fact is with, a, with an EMP, we wouldn't necessarily have any idea. I think we may get a ramp up in hostilities beforehand. Yep. But, you know, it's one of those things where you're just not going to know. So things that are very important electronically that you don't necessarily use all the time is a great thing to put away in a, uh, a Faraday bag. And a big thing to consider also, if you're putting stuff in a Faraday bag, if it has alkaline batteries in it, make sure you remove those alkaline batteries before you put those items in there. For long-term storage, you don't want the batteries corroding and ruining your equipment that's in there. Yes, I had a really nice night vision scope that I left a dumb AA battery in the, <laughs> and it, it ruined it. It ruined it. Um, okay, one more question and we'll go on. Uh, Cheryl asked, my sister is moving to Greenwood, South Carolina. Is that a good area? Yeah, sure. It's just south of us. Um, and it's a good area and property down there is not as expensive as it is here mm -hmm. yet, but it will be. Uh, we have tons of people moving here. Uh, and now with the border being wide open, we have tons of people moving here from there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, but yeah, Green Greenwood is a great in fact, when I, I think I was in third grade in Greenwood, I think I was, or, or yeah, th third grade Greenwood, uh, and Emerald City is what it's called. But yeah, it's a, it's a good area. I haven't been really, I haven't had a lot to do in Greenwood in a yeah. while, but but typically it's it's a good more uh, smaller town, but yet large enough to to be have conveniences. Right. Still have a lot of your amenities that you'd find in a bigger city in a in a smaller town. And Greenville's not that far away, right. which is a pretty big city. Okay, let's go to some more because we've got lots to cover. All right, so build your emergency kit. Now, one of the things they recommend, because it's a low or no cost, they say first thing is, is what, what you're going to put in your emergency kit at this point are things that you already have. So if you have flashlights, batteries, you want to make sure you have some water, uh, food, non-perishable food items, you know, just things that you can put tarps, uh, whatever you've got. And, and again, we're going to go over the, their official list next week, but I think that, you know, just some things that you have, mm -hmm. you know, uh, things that you're going to possibly need. Medical, medical is important. And donuts, it, donuts, have donuts, Twinkies and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you do need to have some food and some different items put back. Um, documents. <laughs> I saw that documents and it looked like donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you need your documents, your important documents. Yeah, that was yeah. the same one that got me. I was like, mm, donuts. Donuts. Now we're thinking about donuts. Uh, and, you know, and then one thing, too, is let, for building your emergency kit. And let's say you're low on funds. You know, you, you've got other things you get, need to do. Um, you can go to stores that when they have sales, mm -hmm. especially on canned food, and you yep. can kind of stock up on a few things. Uh, go to food pantries. If you're low on income, you know, I, we we helped at a food pantry for years uh, and every Saturday or not every Saturday, it was once a month, I think it was. And we would go on that Saturday and we would work uh, and it really helped a lot of people in that community. And so if you're if you're needing something like that, that is a great resource. You know, one thing that any kind of emergency kit that I always recommend that, that a lot of people don't have on their lists um, or don't really think about are latex gloves. Mm. You know, there, there's lots of situations that you could find yourself in where you need a pair of latex gloves, whether you're dealing with an injury for yourself or someone else, um, having to process game, whatever. There's a lot of instances where you need latex gloves. And that's one that I always recommend throwing a box of them in your in your emergency kit. Or maybe even better yet, nitrile, because uh, a lot of people have latex or, like, uh, yep, allergies. Right. Shannon does. Yep. The the natural and nitrile gloves. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you can put those um and two, one of the things about FEMA is they do talk about specifically about hazardous materials mm -hmm. or biological yep. uh, that could happen, uh, you know, like a train derailment where you have chemicals, which happened to us. I think it was actually near Greenwood, come mm -hmm. to think of it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, they had to evacuate like 1,500 people out of this area. That was instant. They had to go. So having this together is going to be good. All right. Um, let's go. So next is um, contact your local fire department. Uh, and this is for various, um, which they give out a lot of times, uh, smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors. 
Uh, they do have programs because, you know, the more you're prepared, the better they can be prepared when right. they come in. So a lot of these are, are local or government, you know, funded or even volunteer type stuff. Uh, you can get stuff like that. Uh, check for free uh, CPR classes mm -hmm. or at least discounted. Right. Uh, you know, and guys, obviously, there's a lot of research that can be done for free. But there's nothing that substitute instruction, physical instruction. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, like whether it's shooting, you know, you go to the you go to a shooting class, mm -hmm. you can go and you can watch all this stuff and then you can do it. But having an instructor there to go, no, you need to do this. You need to stand this way. You need to hold it this way. And it helps us to interpret the right way to do it. Right. Sometimes we disconnect from here to what we're seeing and then we get out to the range or, you know, martial arts is a great example. You're not going to learn martial arts watching videos. You need someone that has a lot of training to be able to help you through that uh, and, and a lot of other things. So while the Internet and getting a lot of resources is good, there are certain things like medical uh, you know, and there's a lot of medical classes. Uh, my good friend Skinny Medic over at Medical Gear Outfitters, uh, he does classes, Stop the Bleed and trauma classes, and, and they're excellent, very well done. And it gives you a lot of hands-on than just watching something. Just yep. like you're watching this, it's more important for you not to take this list, but to go to the website and to gain that information and to study. Um, a lot. I'm telling you guys, it's like, so much information. It's really, it's really incredible. Yeah. And the American Red Cross is a great resource for CPR courses. A lot of times you can, they do offer uh, discounted CPR courses. They offer free CPR courses. So just keep an eye on their website in your local area and see what they have coming up. Yes. Yeah. There, there are resources and the fire department a lot of times has yep. different things that they do. Uh, it benefits them for people to be more involved. Mm -hmm. So just an excellent thing. And two, guys, honestly, um, let's see. Did I, I think I actually skipped one. <clears throat> uh, did I? Did I just yeah. jump? Yeah. I just jumped, man. I was like, you know. Hit to number seven. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, it's funny because I thought, I don't, I don't remember saying that. Okay, number seven is talk to family. Go ahead and, and get your family on board. Uh, have a destination. You know, if something were to happen, and there's no cell service or there's an emergency. So, so the lines are tied up and 911's out is, you know, they may come to your house and go, or they could be your children and go, wow, where are my parents? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then they had no a destination. They go, Oh, you know what? They'll be here. So sit down, talk to them, have a plan. You know, we talked about this a number of times. If you have a house fire, yep. making sure that everyone has a designated point to be at, we have a designated point that if we have a house fire, that's where you go. Because if you're if you don't, you don't know that that person's inside the house. And again, like the story of the father whose child wasn't out there with him and he mm -hmm. goes back in and the house collapsed on him. And yet his daughter was in the backyard you know, and they were in the front yard. You know, we I really recommend if you've got younger children, you know, we started with our boys when they were about three or four years old. We would have fire drills at home. Oh. And, you know, we had our designated place where everyone was supposed to go. And, you know, we would have a fire drill and make sure that everyone went to their location where they were supposed to go. So it would be easy for us to account for everyone. The worst thing you could have happen is, like you were talking about, you've got a small child that the fire alarm goes off or they see smoke, they get scared and they hide under their bed or in their closet. You know, you want them to know what the plan is, how to react and to be able to escape and know where to go once they get out of the house so everyone can be accounted for. That's right. Well, one thing that FEMA recommends is teach your children not to be afraid of firemen. Yep. You know, you teach them, don't talk to strangers. Don't, and this fireman comes in with his, oh, you know, I think it's Darth Vader. <laughs> Darth Vader. <laughs> you got a lightsaber. <laughs> and, um, you know, they're thinking they're one of the little Padawan learners, mm -hmm. you know, but um, the, the fact is, is, you know, when they don't need to try to, the, the, a fire department doesn't need to be searching the firemen mm -hmm. for your children under a bed. And yep. that's true. They do get scared and they go in the wrong places. So teaching them that. Um, and one thing we do, if you have a second story is have one of those roll out ladders yep. and we have one right by the window uh, where we can just drop it down and we can escape. Having a fire plan uh, is, is vital and you it's need peace to have of your mind. family. It, yeah. It's really peace of mind. Well, and fires happen 
all the time. Yep. You know, they talked about flooding being the biggest disaster, but I would say that house fires are probably even bigger mm -hmm. because they happen all the time. And a uh, small electrical fire, something can, can happen. A cooking grease fire, that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest. Um, and I just talked about this. We did the hero blanket or whatever, and we got these, uh, I got them, they're in this little red uh, case, and you can hook them up. And so I bought a number of people in our family one of these, and they can put it right there at their kitchen or wherever. Yeah. And you can take that blanket, it's fireproof. And if you have a grease fire or something happens, you can just throw it on top of it, and it'll take away the oxygen, it'll smother it. Mm -hmm. So there are things like that, fire extinguishers, uh, very important to have. And know how to use. Yes, yes. And make sure they're not expired. Right. So those are things that, you know, are, and really part of the family planning, teach your children, say, look, this is, then you come home one day and they've been spraying each other, but <laughs> you know, teach your children, uh, this is what you do uh, because, you know, it could really save some things. My mother-in-law, uh, her house caught on fire a few years ago and it, because my brother-in-law was cooking in the late at night mm -hmm. and he laid down and fell asleep and it started a grease fire and it burned uh, three quarters of the house up. Mm -hmm which was nice because then she had it rebuilt and it looks it's a lot nicer than it was before. And it was pretty nice before. Okay. Let's get back to, okay. Now store important documents. Again, we talked about this, about making sure you have them up high, but you know, uh, passports, uh, bank information. I mean, a lot of that's going to be online, birth certificates, things that you have to have a physical, yep. you know, uh, uh, again, electronics, put them up, put them in waterproof bags and get those up high. Um, and insurance and information, especially because you want to make sure your insurance company covers right. uh, what you have had happen. And that was one thing FEMA also talks about is making sure that you do have correct right insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. and have insurance to be able to take care of things. Again, this isn't necessarily a grid down into the world, but a lot of this stuff can apply. But we have more natural disasters. I think we've had more natural disasters than we've ever had a grid down, down to the apocalyptic world. zombie apocalypse. <laughs> but prepare for that too. <laughs> or we could have what we have done in Haiti right now. Ooh. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about that that video. I mean, the movie with uh, Viggo Mortensen, where, the, the Road, mm -hmm. and he and his son were walking down this road trying to get to a certain place, and there were cannibals out there. You know. So it can happen. We've now seen it. <laughs> and these aren't even zombies. That's the crazy thing. Okay. Um, we're going to go, we're going to talk about one more thing and then we're going to jump over to uh, some questions because we want to make sure you guys have that. But floodsmart.gov is the website where you can go and look at your specific area for flooding. Uh, and again, it's not just that your house is protected, but your evacuation routes are also protected. Uh, and that is one thing too. And I don't know where I missed that one, but having evacuation routes laid out, um, you know, if there is flooding, if there is something that's happened, one thing that we did a few years ago, uh, there was a tornado and, and actually it was right up the road from us and it blocked trees were down all the way up the road. And so I had to stop and I was like, well, I can't even get to the house. So I had to go around another way. And knowing those different routes, it might, you know, could be very useful, especially if you don't have the internet, you know, a lot of times with ways and things like that, you can find different routes, but take some time to, to kind of know your area. Uh, if you're not careful, you kind of, you know, you go from home to work and here's to the store and here's to, you know, the gun shop and <laughs> you, you know, these routes, but you don't necessarily know some of the back roads and some of the ways to get out. And it's very important, especially if you're moving into an area for the first time you've moved into the area you've only been there a year or two and you know you're kind of focused on where you're going yeah i mean Absolutely. if you're like robbie and i we've been down in this area for most of our lives so we know a lot of things about this area but it's important if especially if you are uh, new to the area whatever area it is find out those different points to be able to get from one place to the other when one of the big things to for me is if i'm evacuating because of an emergency be it a a tornado, a hurricane, earthquake, or whatever, one of the first things that goes in the back of the vehicle is a chainsaw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because if you do come to a road that's blocked because of a tree being down versus having to backtrack miles to get around it, you have a chainsaw with you, you clear your path and keep right on driving. That's a good point. You know, Seth was my son, my oldest son, Seth, was near where you live. Mm -hmm. And um, 
was coming through and there was a tornado hit while he was in his car and a tree fell, but he was in a subdivision that that was the only access out. Yeah. And so he, he sat there and he was like, what am I going to do? And then all of a sudden a couple of guys showed up and said, yeah. and cut him out. Uh, uh, so anyway, that's, that's definitely a great smart move and, you know, having emergency tools and things in your vehicle is, is smart as well. And once again, knowing how to use them. Right. Okay. We have some more questions. Uh, Mickey B asked question. Just found out that Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania police have closed up from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. No police on the streets patrolling. No phones being answered. Precincts closed. How's your area? We're good, but we've heard quite a bit. I think I was just watching something. Uh, Jared from Guns and Gadgets. He does a lot of political, you know, Second Amendment news. But he was talking about in Connecticut, um, in this one particular city, there's this black pastor who has formed these guardians mm -hmm. and they're armed. And if any place needs them, they will go and they will patrol the streets and protect. Uh, and I think it's really going to get down to a lot of that. Unfortunately, this is happening in a lot of places where law enforcement, they just don't have the staffing and they don't have the support. And they obviously don't have the support from, you know, the higher ups. So, um, it's becoming a problem. This guys, this is the reason we have the second amendment. Mm. I mean, part of the reason there's two, there's a twofold effect, but it's just preserve your life and for those you love. And so you should, you know, and it's funny because you know, I don't know where you are specifically as far as your, um, your favorability for, for firearms or whatever, but guys, that is the most uh, efficient and best means of self-defense having a good firearm and being able to train with it. One thing that happened with us here, you know, we've talked about this at the beginning was that South Carolina now is a constitutional carry state. One thing that I thought was really cool is the state allowed for so many millions of dollars to be used for free training That's right. for <clears throat> its civilians. You can, you know, you need to get training. If nothing else, go to your local gun, sh gun range or whatever, and I'm sure you'll find someone that'll be glad to help you. So important. Uh, John G asks, I'm so looking into a satellite phone. Do you think it's a good idea as an individual to buy? Yes. Uh, we were talking about this. It's funny. John and I were talking about this on Sunday night. Uh, there's a number of different uh, communication uh, resources. Ham is probably one of the best. The problem with ham is you need to know quite a bit mm -hmm. to get your ham license. You've got to go through and get a, a, get a license. And then there are different levels of those licenses. And then the equipment... But again, in an emergency emergency situation, it's really one of the best. And it's been that way for a long time. Uh, but also, you know, in your little GMRS radios, your little family radios, they're short. They're line of sight. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a lot. There are some better radios out there. Uh, CBs, same thing. Uh, but one thing is with satellite radios is they actually connect to satellites in orbit. Uh, and so that is a, to me, one of the best ways, even in an EMP, it could be, um, according to where they are, you could still, maybe not at first, maybe it might take out a satellite, but you're <clears> able to use that to be able to communicate. One of the good thing is there's so many satellites in space that if we lost certain satellites, you could repurpose other satellites to be able to, to maintain communication. Right. Right. So to me, and that's one thing I've kind of been back and forth because I've been like, well, if there's an EMP, I don't know. I don't... Listen, having a satellite radio when the communications are down, like recently when the AT&T and those mm -hmm. phones, I, yep. we had just switched AT&T from Verizon and then boom, we didn't have cell service for the day. Um, that could be extended. That could be extended. So uh, satellite radio to me, they're more expensive. Yep. They do have plans that you have to buy with them. And the minutes are expensive, but you're not going to be sitting on your satellite radio talking. I'm not going to be talking to Robbie about, you know, satellite phone, satellite phones. Yeah. Yeah. Satellite phone. Yeah. I said satellite radio, <laughs> yeah. satellite radio. Robbie just knocked me when I start that kind of stuff. But uh, I think satellite, ra satellite, ra I'm going to say it again. Satellite <laughs> uh, phones are a, an excellent option for a yep. number of different things. And I think you need to have many tools in your toolbox. Yep. And you're right. That is just another tool that you add to your toolbox that gives you another layer of communication in case of an emergency. 
Right. And, you know, a lot of people use them like when they go overseas or they go like to Africa, to the middle of the bush, and they can use these satellite radio or satellite phones. <laughs> I need to get a satellite radio, just I'll <laughs> shut up. Uh, get a satellite phone. Uh, or if you're like up in the Rockies or somewhere mm -hmm. where you're getting sparse service. That's the thing. There's still a lot of places in this country that doesn't have cell service. Um, you know, Alaska, a lot of places even here in South Carolina, you get up in the mountains and you have no service. Um, if you're out hiking or backpacking, going down into adventuring, a yep, yeah. you lose all your cell service and you may still need a way to get out in case of an emergency. Yeah. So, yep. Highly recommended. We got Sarah Mac off. Uh, Mush Muskoka Maama asks. Say that three times fast. <laughs> anyone have any idea how I can handle this situation? Neighbor saw preps. Talking like it's his stuff too. Told him it's gone. Doesn't believe me. Keeps wanting more. Nope. My family needs it. Ideas to hide. Well, first off, I'd have a heart to heart with him. We're hiding the supplies. We're hiding the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <laughs> let me. Well, let me get. I want to make sure that we get this straight. For one thing, you're it's your preps. It's your property. There's no emergency unless you have a emergency, emergency at your home right now. <laughs> uh, he has no business touching your preps. Uh, you know, the thing is, just like my family, um, I'm, in fact, my, my wife's family, we talk to them. We just talk about it. And they'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah, we need to do that. And then they wouldn't do anything. And, you know, over the period of time, it just got to be they all agreed, but they never did anything. And finally, one night uh, she said, hey, let's talk to our family tonight. I think we really need to talk. And I said, no, I'm not talking to them again. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. And then she brought it up anyway. You know how that goes. And so then I finally just went, I'm sitting there with my in-laws and it's brothers and family. I mean, there was about 10 people there. And I just stopped and I said, let me just put it this way. We've been prepping. We're putting food back. We're doing things for our family. And if something were to happen, we would help feed your kids because we, we just couldn't. We were going to do that. I said, but for you to come down and join us, you would be taking food out of my kid's mouth. I said, so don't. And the next day I started getting text messages or pictures of, mm -hmm. well, hey, we bought this, we bought that, we did this. And then one of her brothers became a full on prepper. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would just, I would just sit down and say, look, this is what we've been preparing. That's just like our bank account. I'm not sharing my bank account with my neighbor. That's what I've worked hard for. And I put that money back. He has no right to that. He also has no right to your preps and your food preps. In fact, he doesn't have any right to anything. Yep. He may want to borrow a chainsaw and you can say, no, I don't want to borrow, let you borrow. It's your business. So just in a good way, say, look, if you're, if you're looking at us, I'm preparing for my family. You need to be preparing for your family. And then we'll join together. We'll join together and we'll work together on stuff. So, you know, if he's even talking about it, I, I would definitely go, nah, nah, because what's going to happen is, let's say you have family from out of town that comes and you have friends that go, hey, you know, and, and they've been good friends for years and you want to help them. And then you got this guy that you don't, you know, that's just a neighbor. I'd be like, uh, it's going to be priority wise. We did a video on that on how to tell people no. Uh, and well, and on the flip side of that, if he's taking your stuff already, I mean, theft is theft. You, know, you can, there's legal routes that you can go for that. If you decide you want to go that, that way, um, you, you know, I would also consider moving all of my preps to a more secure location, whether that's a secure outbuilding or even moving my preps indoors inside my own house and securing them. So he doesn't have any more access to any of my preps that I had. Listen, sometimes people that are so bold, it's, you know, it can be difficult to mm -hmm. confront them. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I know people that have been like that over the years. They and, but you know, the other side of it is a lot of times they can take it straight, right? So I, I just would say, hey, okay. All right, let's let's stop here and let's go ahead and finish out what we've got. Okay, so they have you can download preparedness resources. They have a lot of different stuff. In fact, I went on there and there'll be a link again when you go to the low and no cost preparedness under that heading. There's a lot of links there and they have PDF files and you can download them. Again, there's a lot of different resources for about anything you can think about. Yep. Yep. Tremendous resource. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing uh, that one, some of the things they talk about is active shooters, cyber attacks, 
Of course, natural disasters, nuclear radiation, how to avoid it, biological, and also even financial. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are aware right now, and we talked a little bit about this last week because it really stunned me, but gold is at the highest it's ever been in history. And I mean, ever, ever. And right now, I think it was it. Uh, it was right under. It was two thousand one hundred and ninety eight dollars this mm -hmm. weekend, or ninety. It ended up at ninety dollars, but it's right at two thousand two hundred dollars an ounce. When I was a jeweler, my family was in the jewelry business. Gold was three hundred dollars an ounce. It is way up there. So well, it's up three almost three hundred dollars in the last two and a half weeks. Right. Right. I mean, it's it's gone way up. What that is, is, is not for you to run out and go buy gold right now. And you might because it may go. It could go way beyond that yeah. is that that is an indicator that things are not right. And that's the big point I want to make. Now, uh, some things you want to do. Plan with your neighbors. Make some plans. And you don't have to get nuts, but you can, you know, and you don't have to come on as a prepper. You can come on as, hey, if we have this happen Let's work together on it. If we have tornadoes that come through, you know, um, or flooding or whatever, go ahead and talk to your neighbors. Make a plan. Not to the neighbor of that one guy. Don't talk to him. <laughs> um, know your evacuation routes. Know the routes. Have maps. Have mm -hmm. physical maps. Laminate them. And you can buy them laminated for yep. that matter. Go to truck stops. Go to service centers. You can even Walmart has some, but... Um, it's, they're less and less because people are so dependent on their GPS. But get physical maps. You can order. You can order for your area. Uh, in fact, if you go to a, a, um, a welcome center a lot of times in mm -hmm. the state, welcome they'll give you free maps. Have maps. Yep. Um, get involved in your community. Get, get involved, you know, with, with different people. Get, in, get to know the fire department. Maybe do some volunteer stuff for them uh, and just get to know them. Um, Make your home safer. One thing that, you know, and I've, I've thought about this in the past, but it, uh, I hadn't in a while, is real shutters. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing we talk about is maybe blackout curtains. If you don't want people to know that you have lights on, if, for, you know, you have a generator or whatever. Um, of course, you can hear it for 100 miles away. But, you know, <laughs> if you if you have a blackout curtains, you know, having shutters, it protects the glass. It protects from storms, but it also protects from people messing around your house. That's right trying to get into the windows uh, and then practice drills, different drills. You know, a few years ago we did a video and I've talked about doing it again. We just haven't, but it was a bug out night. And one night with our prepper group, we just planned a bug out night and we at a specific location. Now, because people are so busy, I did have to tell them the night because mm -hmm. we had to coordinate it. Uh, I would rather have not done that even. And then, but I didn't tell them the time. And then I, so at one point I just sent out a message and I said, we got a bug out at eight o'clock and we're going to be at this parking lot and which was not convenient for anybody in the group. I mean, it was kind of out. And so everybody came, we did a full video on it, but it was just a drill. It was very eye opening and it was really a lot of fun. Uh, the group actually enjoyed it. Uh, so, you know, it's doing things that, and you don't have to do that for what we're talking about necessarily, but again, fire drills, um, you know, thinking about tornadoes and having your safe room ready, making a drill for that. I'll tell you a little story. A few years ago, we lived up in Brevard, North Carolina. And uh, I was in my shop and my kids were there with two of my cousins, my nephews. And they were there for the summer there. So there were five of them. And all of a sudden I heard this crazy noise outside. And I went to open up my shop door and couldn't open it. Mm. And I knew right then there was a tornado. Mm -hmm. And finally, I just slammed against it and opened it up in time to see this giant tree fall in between my garden and our my car. It just fell right in the middle. So I ran to the inside the house. And when I got inside the house, all the kids were in the hallway and they all had pillows over their head. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that was impressive. I mean, they were young. First thing you're asking was, where's my pillow? Yeah, where's my pillow? <laughs> well, a few years later, we sold the house. People bought it. One night, storm came up. His wife was in the bedroom. He heard some noise, so he came out to the other side of the house, and a tree fell right on top of that hallway. Mm. 
Now, I don't know how you're going to prepare for that, <laughs> but just it is what it is. So, you know, um, big, huge trees around your house. Think about that. Think about having them cut back. Okay. I think we got through the list. I, I think the biggest thing here, guys, is check out the, check out FEMA. Check out ready.gov. Check it out. There's just a lot of things, little detail things that a lot of times I think we miss. That's right. That's right. And, and somebody's sat down and taken the time to really put together a lot of really inclusive, great information that you know you can save yourself a lot of time by utilizing the tools that are already there that they've that they've put in place for you. You know, we live in a a, a very um, crazy world as far as information, and there's a lot of information out there going. And sometimes, you know, it's contradictory in some places. Mm -hmm. Some and sometimes it's you know this is my take on it. This is my take on it. The one thing I think about this is these are. Again, boots on the ground. These people have been through a lot of this stuff and they're able to compile a list of things they've seen that are needed. And I, I think that may be something that uh, honestly for the government to put it out, it's it's well, impressive. Because you know, usually it's not. I couldn't agree with you more. The first time that I ever went to ready.gov, I, I was looking for something specific on uh, some nuclear stuff and had very low expectations when I went to the site and I pulled it up. And it was a rabbit hole. Yeah. I mean, I, I was clicking on links and going to all different kind of stuff, reading on this stuff. I was probably on the site two and a half, three hours. Right. With all the information that they had on there. I was like, this is really impressive for something the government put together. Right. Right. And, you know, and again, take your experience and your preps yep. and, and go through and figure it out. But I think this gives you, it kind of fills some voids that you may or may not have thought about. Right. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the thing is with prepping a lot of times is it's just getting and getting and getting, you know, and uh, we don't really train with it. We don't try it out. You know, it's one of the things we've done is have fire clinics where we go out and we start fires with a group. And it's amazing that people have some really impressive fire kits that have never used them mm -hmm. and they don't even know how to use them. And they're going, what do you do with this? And, you know, so it was really cool to be able to do that in practice and getting your kids out, teaching them how to do that. Those are things that are that are just important for their survival. Uh, guys, we live in a really kind of crazy time right now. And um, and, and crazy times have happened all along history. Yep. We're, we're not immune to it is the thing. And I think a lot of times we feel immune to it. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff, whether it's political, geopolitical, um, just environmental, environmental, a lot of things that are happening. And it's more important now just to be prepared. And again, this is a list of stuff that you can do for pretty much nothing. It's just getting yourself in good shape. So we really appreciate you guys for coming and checking us out. And uh, we do this every week. We'll be talking next week about the kits, the actual setups that they're looking for. We'll have some input and we'll have some ideas, uh, but this is really a good base for you to get started with. Uh, and we really appreciate Robbie for being here. Great to see you tonight. Make good sure to you here. check out his live tonight at six Eastern standard time. And uh, the link to his channel is right down below in the description. You can click on it, go straight to it. Yep. Now, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the new open carry law that was just passed in South Carolina and going over a lot of the, a lot of questions people have had with it and a lot of the intricacies with the law itself uh, and how it relates to residents as well as non-residents and really digging into that. So check it out. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm going to give you an example. So if I go like when that first happened mm -hmm. and one of my buddies from North Carolina said, can they conceal carry? Yep. And I went to three or four different news reports, uh, people announcing it, saying that it was just an open carry law. Right. Right. So a lot of times with news, they're telling the news, but they're not telling the whole truth. There's been a lot of misinformation put out by, by a lot of different organizations about this new carry law. And uh, I think right now I'm at about four hours or so through my research with it. And uh, that's all that I'll be doing the rest of the afternoon as well is doing some more research, maybe talking with a couple of uh, attorneys that are that are legal experts in this area and should have some really, really good information for you guys tonight that is accurate and factual and not just uh, hearsay. And also check out Wheaton Arms. Makes some of the best Glock aftermarket triggers and barrels on the market. Also, you do the PSA upgrades for the dagger, uh, the official. 
And um, also Sarah Mack, we really appreciate her for getting the questions to us and kind of setting up things. So guys, hang in there, be prepared. This is something that's just basic. And this is our own federal government that's recommending these things. And honestly, maybe for the first time, it's, mm. it's actually <laughs> something we can use. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.